Hello, everyone. Welcome to A Familiar Quest. I am so excited to be joined by all these amazing players, and I am really excited for all the people who are viewing us right now. This is going to be a very strange and wild ride, I hope. Uh, there will be darkness, there will be comedy, there will be laughs. Uh, hopefully, there will be no TPKs. But let's kind of jump right in. And after all of the all of the role playing business, we'll we will introduce all our wonderful players who are fantastic, who you are here to watch. So much has happened in the multiverse. Asmodeus has been killed. Strad von Serovich, four hundred years ago, was staked and killed in Barovia, leaving a gnomish dampier in charge of all of Barovia. The world has had a cataclysmic shift as some people thought Asmodeus himself, this devil, was actually trying to help the multiverse. And so now there is a war going on. A war, war about faith, who's in control of the nine hells. And all Barovia itself in the shadow fell has been shaken to its core with this new leader, this new uh, entity in charge who is not entirely evil. And that's where we find ourselves. Very much a multiverse at war where everything that you thought you knew is not true. And so that's where we begin. We find ourselves in mist and there are two characters, I believe, uh, one named Mugen and one named Gale. You are surrounded by mist at this moment. You feel the droplets of the mist all around you on your faces. You, I, I don't know quite where you were before all of this, but the mist just rose around you quite rapidly because you're not necessarily incredibly tall, either of you. But you've been perhaps separated from those you were with. And you continue on. What do you? What do both of you look like? And what are you as you're traveling through this mist? Mugen. Oh, hi. My name's Mugen, and um, I am a death dog. But I don't know why people call me that. I don't like death. I want, like friends. I like friends. I like bones. I like friends. But squirrel. And um, I have really nice golden. Fur. It's a little wet now. I don't like being wet. It's gross. I want to be inside where it's warm. And um, yeah, I, uh, uh, I've got two heads. Um, there's Mugen 1 and Mugen 2. I'm Mugen 1. No, I'm Mugen 2. Which one are... It doesn't matter. We're both Mugen. Um, and uh, I'm a fighter. I've got... Uh, I've been told I'm a fighter. <laughs> uh, I'm a lover of bones, though. Uh, and uh, 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 I've got some armor on. Um, I've got a little circlet around both my heads that have a little spike. Um, that's how when someone says, we can go poke, I, I go poke. Um, and uh, sometimes I claw at people if, if uh, I, I'm told to do so, but I don't like, I, uh, I just think I'm giving hugs. Um, and uh, yeah, that's me. And I, I, I come bear my little friend, uh, Gail. Uh, and uh, I, I like Gail a lot. Gail's real cool. Uh, we met, uh, we came from uh, Waterdeep. Uh, we used to hang out in the City of the Dead. Cause um, a lot of good bones in there. A lot, there looks so many bones. I don't know how long I was there, but oh, it was great. Bones everywhere, really. Yeah. What's up with Gail? Gail. <laughs> Alfred the Brave is my full name, if you must know. But um, my friends call me Gail, <laughs> like Mugen. I'm usually the one who says Mugen Pope. Um, mostly because my rapier is not big enough to do most of the poking myself. Um, seeing as how I'm a rat <laughs> and, and what's not, um, I may be little, but what I lack in size, I make up for in the size of my heart and the size of my love for Mugen. Um, I'm working on my, not my bravery necessarily, I don't think I would say that, but, um, more so the follow through on the bravery that I know is inside me that doesn't always come across when I try to stab enemies that are much, much bigger than me. Um, did I mention I was a rat? 
I don't think I did. I'm a rat barbarian and I do like to rage, rage. And I've been traveling with Mugen for... Gosh, I don't know how long, Mugen. Um, sometimes the days blur together, but I think it's Saturday. But it might be Sunday. Or Friday. However long that's been. Um, and I'm just happy to be included. You do, however, feel unsettled. I imagine Gail is always very, very optimistic, judging by your refrain, but there's something creepy about this mist, something that is separating you from the rest, um, from your world, from your home. You, feel, you see shadows in the mist, and they kind of coalesce and then disappear. You think you see faces at moments. Been very much the same for you, Mugen. And you smell the air change. The dirt doesn't smell the same. The rain, the water, the mist, it all doesn't taste the same to you specifically, Gail. And Mugen, your your paws, where it was once just kind of salty and cobblestones, have started to sink into dirt and mud and you emerge from the mist and ahead of you you see a large sprawling broken down castle just gothic held up by pieces of rusted metal here and there strange devices over a great chasm and lightning cracks overhead as a storm just swirls over very specifically this castle. What do you do? Mugen is picking up um, her paws and doing that thing the dogs over there like, oh, I don't want to step on this, but I must step out and like shake. And I'm kind of doing that weird dog dance where I don't want to touch the ground. <clears throat> oh, Gail, did, everything's gross. Dirt's weird here. Dirt's weird here. Also here and oh, here again. <laughs> I, I know we came here because because we thought you heard that there would be more more bones for me? That's what I was told, but... Is this just me, or does it smell really bad? Well, I think it smells kind of good, but I've been told my sense of smell is uh, not usual for everybody else. I like a bad smell, I guess. I like feet. Does it smell like feet? Does it smell like feet, Todd? <laughs> you smell what does feet. smell like? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You smell feet. I want a combined perception check from both <gasps> you, Mugen, and Gail. First roll. Is, oh, no. Would this perhaps be um, a, a smell perception? It is for you, yes. Oh. Ah, three. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's a lucky number. My, minus one perception. Oh, no. <laughs> Twenty-one. That's a twenty-one. You smell, you smell feet, and you smell death. As a single toe erupts out of the mud, one big toe crawls its way out like a worm out of the mud, and inches in front of both of you. I bite it. You bite the toe and it wiggles around in your mouth. How hard do you bite this toe? Um, I'm biting it to pick it up so I can uh, take it with us because it's a new friend. Y you see this, uh, Gail, a very nasty toe. This toe probably was not in great shape before death and certainly not during undeath. And it's just trying to inch its way out of Mugen's mouth wiggling um moo moo i'm i'm just gonna guess that maybe if it's on its way out of your mouth maybe you should let let that nasty little toe drop maybe oh okay drop drop it <laughs> not the kind of bone that i think you were hoping to find here no. oh well i know there's bones inside people sometimes yes um, maybe let's find people that are not wiggling in your mouth to get the bones from, though. Okay. D did you not smell the the smell on that one? The oh, 
it smelled real good. It was real strong. I like a good strong smell. Okay. Um, we'll um take that into account, definitely. Um, but let's maybe keep moving. Uh I know that I'm not exactly a meteorologist or nothing, but is a storm supposed to stay so localized above a location like that one is, or is that maybe unusual? Mm, maybe it's a bad storm? Just keep or... an eye on it, okay, Mugen? Okay. And Gale's Pest. gonna clean his paws a little bit and try and hold them over his eyes. Okay. Pest, what are you doing right now? You are in Castle Ravenloft. The uh, most gothic castle that has ever existed. I am uh, going about the morning roll call. Uh, I live in a little... Well, to call it a garden is generous. This is Barovia, <laughs> after all. Uh... But garden-ish type place in in Castle Ravenloft, uh, and every morning the other, what do I want to call them, my companions, the other insects and bugs and small vermin of the garden, uh, come to me for roll call and get assigned their duties for the day. Or anyway, that's what I think is happening. <laughs> A little tiny moth. Just full of dander, almost like a comet moving through the air, lands next to you in the garden. Oh, and reporting, it's hard reporting. for you to generally t tell emotion on moths' faces. It seems very tense. Oh, 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 oh! No. I was going to send you to dust some of the courtyards today. Um, all right, all right, Mothra, tell me what's going on. Can we say that? We're we going to get sued if I call this moth Mothra. <laughs> <laughs> Moth Ra. There it is. Yeah, and Moth Mothar. Hello, Mothar. Good Legally morning. distinct. Uh, what's that's the one? What seems to be the problem, Moth, whose name I shan't say again? Oh. Oh, really? oh no. Does oh. anyone have any idea what Moth just said? The the, the crickets are just like. I got nothing. <laughs> All right. Um, well, uh, thank you for bringing me this news, Moth. Um, next. And it just zooms up over the wall. Uh -huh. and, and it's shaking dust off itself up above the garden wall. Uh, um, Wasp, would you... I, I don't know if Moth wants us to follow him. Would you just fly up and, and see what he's trying to show us, would you? Wasp goes in the wrong direction. Yes, yes, that <laughs> tracks. Oh, that wasp. All right, I'll 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 see to it myself. The rest of you have your assignments. Um, have a, have a, have a dreadful day. Uh, and I, and as the maybe two inch long pest mascot from the magical university of Strixhaven that I am, I begin to very slowly make my way over to the wall so that I can eventually climb up yeah, it. What does exactly Pest look like? <laughs> yeah, so uh, Pest is a small, maybe inch and a half, two inch long uh, caterpillar uh, with lots of spines protruding and little like eye looking beads all up and down. Um, <laughs> Pest has practiced over his many centuries of life uh, to not open his mouth fully when he talks. It's upsetting. There are a lot of teeth. Um, and so he sort of always talks a little bit like this. And you know, um, and uh, I have little tufts of blue hair, uh, sort of, well, again, sort of like the garden hair is maybe generous. Uh, a thick clump of whiskers that are vaguely blue, uh, sort of coming off in a couple of different directions. And these little, like, single claw legs that I'll occasionally sort of uh, fold myself up at a 90 degree angle and wave a couple of to sort of emphasize whatever it is I'm saying. Uh, how do you get up the wall? Very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, very, very I, it's, carefully. And that is, well, that not so much, actually. I can pretty confidently say that however Pest gets up the wall, it isn't careful. Uh, and in fact, may take a few, <laughs> a few tries, I suppose. Um, 
Oh, you know what I will do? As I get to the wall, uh, I sort of take one of my little legs and sort of wave it in a pattern uh, and mumble some things. And and these little leaves, these little like sturdy leaves grow out from the mortar, like the chinks in the mortar in this wall. And I walk up, th- I'm casting druid craft, and I walk up them uh, like a staircase that I grow as I go. <laughs> All right. You inch your way up your staircase that you've created with <laughs> druid craft uh, and you get to one of the top battlements. And Castle Ravenloft has changed quite a bit in your time. Mm. I'm not entirely sure what your age is, Pest, but uh, since Whittle, the Lord of Barovia, has taken over, there have been renovations. Some parts of the castle have been destroyed and have been repaired with big metal bracers and mechanisms. And uh, as well as several stone gnome squidlings as gargoyles. All the gargoyles were immediately replaced. They were very uh, adversarial and had to be Ah. dealt with. So there are lots of smashed gargoyles all around the grounds um, that have been conveniently whittled down into little squidlings all around Ravenloft. You see a death dog. And a, is Gale writing <laughs> Mugen right now? Please. Yeah, Gale has his tiny little paws like in, in the back of the fur at the back of Mugen's neck. So you'd probably see Gale has really big round, like uh, they're called Dumbo rats. So big ears that are like the size of his head on either side. And you're just going to see that with his little eyes poking up from the back of Mugen's head. You've not seen this. Pest, there's something has fundamentally changed about the universe uh you don't know quite when this has happened but you are looking at two familiars without a warlock without a wizard walking up the hill towards ravenloft one of them has just dropped a ron toe out of its mouth oh they fit right in but i don't strange. see is the zombie oh. that that toe was attached to slowly making its way behind them All right, well, the first thing I'm going to try is to rear up as far back as I can and yell, Hey! Behind you! (laughs) Just my little... Ah, no, they can't... Lightning Ah. cracks over Castle Ravenloft, and you see nothing on the wall. Scream at you. (laughs) I'm shocked and offended. Um, (laughs) uh, Well, I look around... And I don't see, you know, any of my troops to hand. Uh, Except, I guess, is Moth still here? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Just dandering everywhere. Yeah. (laughs) Um, All right. All right, Moth. Um, We haven't trained for this. I'm not even sure you're capable of it. But those two are in danger. So here we go. And I'm going to crawl over to Moth and, like, flip upside down and try and latch myself onto Moth, who then who then I, I will, you know, I am trusting to take off and fly me down to assist these two unsuspecting victims. You, a moth grabs you, <laughs> grabs your back and it is in a very uh, uncomfortable, you don't probably like flying very much and it I starts flying it. you down. <laughs> yeah, you slip several times <laughs> uh, and you are suddenly landed in front of these people and at this moment there is a massive earthquake and the ground kind of erupts and something starts oozing out of the mud and it's coffin oh and you recognize it oh. it's whittle's coffin oh. the lord of barovia oozing out of the ground from the very depths of the castle into the mud into the rain does she usually do that? Not usually. Okay. Oh, oh no! It's oh, I'm so sorry. It's all right. Uh, uh, sh- uh, 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 Whittle. It's it's really it's fine. Welcome to Castle Ravenloft. Hello. Uh, hi. Is this your hello. Fire? Well, now that we've got that out of the way. Um. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, Galahort the Brave. Oh, nice they to meet you. The right names. Um, yes, of course. That's Mugen, and oh, hello. That's, that's also Mugen. Hi. Um, does that always, um... No! Do the, 
Oh, no. no, not that I've ever seen before. No, no, it's it's rather new. But but I know who's in. I mean, I know who it belongs to. Oh, are there are there bo- are there bones in it? Because usually yeah. there's bones in those no. boxes. Well, I mean, the, not the last time I saw Whittle. Um, no, not bones. I mean, oh. yes, I suppose ultimately, yes, there are bones within Whittle within the coffin. But but not that you should gnaw on. Mugen, was it? Yep, that's me. Mm. Right. Okay, don't care about box then. Mm. Mugen. We just what? got here. Don't be rude. Oh, okay. Um, should I open the box? Um, yes, I, I think I open the box. maybe she's here to... Oh, oh all right. well, there you go. That's fine. She's here to welcome us for something, I'm sure. Is this, what? How immaculate. It, what, what does, what does uh, <laughs> Whittle's coffin look like? Whittle's coffin basically looks like Strahd's coffin. Um but painted a different color scheme and there's there's gears and hinges um, that adhere the door to the rest of the coffin. So it's a lot easier for her to open it instead of the old timey coffins where you have to open it when you try to climb out, it falls back down on you. So it, it kind of protects her from getting hit in the head. Perfect. And Mugen, uh, give me a, a strength check as you try okay. to open this coffin. <laughs> okay, that is a 17 plus. Oh, my strength at? Boop, boop, boop. Three, 20. Perfect. You, uh, yes. you, you almost tear open the coffin and you see before you a gnomish vampire in repose. Arms just crisscross over their chest. And they are... V- Asleep, eyes closed. Oh. I a like- little bit of blood trailing off, and at their feet oh. is a purple, weird, almost like a tiny miniature mind flare wrapped around its feet. I lick them in the face. <laughs> <laughs> you, you you lick the vampire in the face. To yes. As you do so, your tongue gets slightly slashed by the pointy fangs sticking out of the gnome's face, and the blood you see just slowly drip back into the tooth. Uh, you hear me can go, <laughs> that little, that sad noise dogs make when they did a bad thing. Oh, the, oh my hero dog just barked. Um, <laughs> Squiddle, oh, oh. you suddenly wake up. <laughs> Someone is barking. It's raining on you. And you hear a bunch of loud voices you've never heard before. Who disturbs me from my slumber? <laughs> oh, it's my favorite pest. And uh, it appears you've made some new friends, but you know, I'm usually not awake this time of the day. Um, that was a warm welcome. Uh, my name is Whittle. And Whittle steps out of this immaculately engineered coffin and as she stands up, she's about four foot seven. Uh, she has long gray hair. She has goggles on her head with a black cape. Um, leather clothing with a series of belts um, that are sort of form fitting. And she has vampire fangs and a very gray pallor. And her clothes are very dusty and dirty because she has been doing experiments for like the last 400 years. My favorite pest. Would you mind introducing me to your new friends? Yeah, pest. Uh, Whittle, as the vampire, is still asleep. This yeah. purplish squiddling is talking to you at this moment, which was one of Whittle's familiars, but is now speaking as if it is Whittle. Um, Did the cat get your tongue? Uh, oh. Yeah, I think Pest does have kind of like a long, like, proboscis that was a little bit hanging. That's excellent, yes. Um, <laughs> uh, so after another moment of, like, confused silence, uh, Pest is going to go over and, like, put himself between that and Mugen and Gale. And and uh, with, with my back to this familiar uh, facing, facing uh, Mugen and, and Gale, I'm just going to say, this is the lord and lady and ruler and 
master of the castle, Castle Ravenloft. This is, um... I don't know who this is. It's an imposter. I... As... Okay. As Whittle thinks, she extends her hand to shake hands with the new guest. <laughs> she notices... It does not look like a hand at all. In fact, it looks like a purple tentacle. Oh! Uh. Pest, come. Can you come over here, please? Um, what, what do I, what do I look like right now? Watch my back. I don't know what they want. Uh, and I'll go over and say, well, well um. You you, look before like you, Pest, you see these long tendrils, but oh. several of them that, Squiddle's body is just kind of rocking back and forth almost like a baby would in a stroller it's tiny little feet dangling not even grazing the mud below and this was Will's familiar but again it is talking like Whittle um well you look like you always did when you were serving um you know ruler of Barovia and all that um, you, you look like you always did. Your your voice is a bit different, though. What's, um, what's going... Should we wake Whittle? I am Whittle. Oh. I'm just a little purple right are. now. Oh. And she, she gets really aggravated and stomps her foot and notices that it does not make contact with the ground. And she <laughs> attempts to look, and she notices her tiny body is levitating. Ah! Oh. And as she turns around to look at her tiny body, she notices her true Dampier form behind her. More lifeless than it was before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are not moving. And you've entered into the mind of your familiar before, but you will you feel yourself cut off irrevocably. You don't sense yourself anymore. Um, as Whittle, she she kind of paces when she gets nervous, and as she attempts to pace, she notices her her tendrils are moving instead of her feet. So she is essentially walking on her tendrils with her hands behind her back. But, this must have been because of all the experiments. I mean, something must have gone wrong. I mean, I was trying to find a way out of Barovia, but I I wasn't trying to become a gnome squidling. I, I'm so sorry. Um, two things that have just come up. Um, number one, are you are you are you saying that you are Whittle? I I think I don't know. I don't really have the I don't have the memories I used to. Oh, well, that was the only way I could think of to test you was to ask who my my favorite <laughs> lieutenant from the garden was. But I don't you know, do I don't you know. do remember Pest? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> no, I, I remember you. I remember you. Oh, that's the, okay. Well, then, who is my favorite lieutenant in the garden? I don't remember that part. <laughs> that's what you always say when I ask you this. It is Whittle. All right, my second question is, were you trying to leave Barovia without me? Um, no, I would I would never do that. Okay, all right, well, that's Def all I needed to hear. That's I mean, I, I know I don't remember everything, I but I definitely remember not planning on leaving without you. <laughs> I would never do that. That's very specific, didn't <laughs> Gail, you smell, well, you're, you're a bit freaked. You've never smelled vampire before, so <laughs> you smell vampire. <laughs> And yet you've never smelled squiddling before. So this is a, a confluence of aromas that you have not necessarily experienced, but now you smell even more death. And Mugen, on your paws, you feel a bright vibration happening. Um, your acute hearing, you just kind of sense like more things are coming up out of the mud. Um, Mugen starts jumping around, looking at the ground. Oh, oh, more friends, more friends coming, more boxes, more bones, more bones, more bones. Gail has his front two paws, like, you know, wound up in Mugen's fur holding on, and you just see 
Like he has a he has a very round little belly and very small squishy little feet, and he's just swinging like a little pendulum every time Mugen hops. He's kind of like thrown from side to side and is just you you're hearing these tiny little squeaks in in the background as you're doing that. Mugi. Mugi. Easy oh, back. Back here. Easy. Oh, oh, oh. But there's more bo there's more more bone more box more bones. I know. I know. I can smell uh, the death. A uh, uh, little bug friend or is are these your friends coming up? I'm, I'm motioning to pass that. I can't remember. Uh, Mugen cannot remember pass names. <laughs> you do see a swarm of maggots run out of the mud and just head down the hill. Oh, no, yes, these are all my... Them. Oh, yes, they're coming to visit. It's for the... Oh, 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 no, no, they're running. Um, Two arms, I think. Wasp! Oh. And you see the zombie that's been following them missing its toe, and it just gets <laughs> very close to all of you lurking over you the subject of a lot of experiments a strange kind of halfling but stitches almost on every limb every finger and it the stitches in the moisture just rot and break apart and it just falls into a series of limbs and fingers and toes and tongue and it just becomes a swarm of writhing body parts and it just rushes all of you roll initiative oh yes Small i told you squiddle or squiddle we should have used the reinforced sutures oh i like that squiddle that's that's a good name because i'm a gnome squiddling that, that's that's pretty clever the other thing you notice is when whittle talks whittle's not using a mouth so much as it's telepathic and connecting to your minds so it's very loud <laughs> read my lips ah. yeah <laughs> <laughs> Um, I Pest got a six for initiative. Yikes. Wow. Okay. That's well. better than me. I got a five. Oh, huzzah. <laughs> uh, I see your five. I raise you an 11. Yes. Hey, Double digits. Hey, look. 16. <laughs> 16. Oh, yes. You want, you want me going first. Excellent. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> this won't end in tragedy. Okay. So, Squirrel, you got, Squirrel, you got what? A five. A five. And Eugenio. A six. Six. And Mugen. Sixteen. And Gail. An eleven. Perfect. And they got what does a swarm of zombie limbs get? Seven. <laughs> All right, you are up, Mugen. What are you doing? As this thing just kind of collapses in front of you, it's not not disturbing, but also, I don't know, it's a lot of bones under all that. I will give everyone a chance to say something verbally to me before I do anything. Are we good? Yeah. <laughs> Go. Okie dokie. Go for it. <laughs> um, you see Mugen's other head that was on top, like the, the top head that kind of like uh, wakes up and just starts, the both heads start drooling. Oh, snack, 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 snack. And I run forward and I, uh, I think I feel like I would go for the tongue first because that's pretty tasty. Uh, <laughs> oh, and I God. do my, my bite multi-attack. So let's see how we do to hit. I'll roll it twice to hit. Um, okay. That's 17 to hit the first time. And then that that's 15, 14, 15, 16 to hit the second time. Both hit. Oh, yes. incredible. That's 2d6 plus 4. Uh, holy crap. 16, sorry, 6 plus 1 is 7, plus 8 is 15 total damage on the tongue. Whoa, okay. Uh, this is fine. 15 total? Yeah, what all did you want to eat? Are you eat how much are you eating? <laughs> I eat the tongue. Are you just biting? Are you doing damage? Or are you also gobbling down? A little bit of both. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I eat the tongue and then if I find an arm I kind of pick it up and just sort of carry it around do that thing that dogs do they go like this to break the neck of the thing they're eating but it's just you, an arm so I'm not breaking anything you slurp up one of the, the, the tongue like it was spaghetti and then you run off with one of the arms at the same time tearing it apart from its elbow 
and you've got yourself a tasty little limb. You do have a little bit of the rumbly tummy, though, as your stomach starts to move, and even you, Gil, knows the tum the stomach of Mugen is uh, unusually animated at this <gasps> moment. Gail, what are you doing? Oh, gosh. I'm uh... so sorry, everyone at home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that mental image. I'm not enjoying it either. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry, Em. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. Oh, poor tiny Gail. What can I do to be helpful here? Um, so position-wise, uh, I know I'm still hanging on Mugen in terms yeah. of the way that that attack ended. Where where exactly are we situated? You're right in front of the, li- the, the swarm of little pieces of zombie limb. Okay, all right. Uh, I am going to go for... Uh, am I close enough... Ooh, am I close enough uh, to... Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see. I would like to inflict wounds okay uh little tiny little gale is going to steal himself kind of like um wiggle his butt a little bit as his hind legs try and like find purchase in mugen's fur and you see him kind of furrow not that i think rats have eyebrows somebody who owns a rat let me know if they have eyebrows or not um but you see his little brow furrow in concentration and we're gonna we're, we're gonna try this. We're gonna try to inflict wounds on the limbs, not the limbs inside of Mugen, though, right? Not the no. <laughs> oh. Yeah, the the one in Mo- Mugi's mouth, I think, is what we're gonna go for. If 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 there is something that I would be able to see, I'm very small. So if there's something that's like moving that is near Mugen's mouth, that is what I would aim for. Is there anything still oh yeah, that arm is still moving in it's Mugen's still mouth. Moving. Yeah, yeah. A hundred percent. All right. So you you climb down the neck and try to strike at it? Yeah. All right, my, go ahead and make an attack my, roll. My tiny little pausies. <laughs> my my little pausies. You were not uh, liking any of this. That is, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh, that is a 12. 12 hits. Ooh, okay, okay. Uh, we have 3d10 necrotic damage, which is... Holy crap. I know, it's pretty beefy. It's like my one good thing that I can do. Uh, 10 damage. It takes 10 points of damage and the limb disintegrates at this moment and the body just falls apart. And Mugen, suddenly your stomach feels more at ease. Does, I think Mugen's probably eating a lot of weird stuff, right? Like dead, yeah. alive, who can say? Um, <laughs> so, the X-ray. X-ray. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> the unde- The undeath. The undead meat inside of you uh, did not feel so great uh, while it was wiggling around, but now it feels like, oh, good, good. So it settled down. No more rumbly tummy for you. And it stops being animated. This, this, what was once a halfling. Uh, Oh, that was pretty good. Thanks. Is there more? Um, I certainly hope not. Um, Wid, uh, Squiddle. Yeah, I know it's taken some getting used to for me too. Yeah, yes. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, it actually, I sort of like it actually. A- anyway, this is the point. Um, They don't usually come here this close to, well, you, unless you tell them otherwise, right? No, usually they're confined to the graveyards. I mean, my, my daily routine is to make sure none of the bodies are coming back up, but they never come this close before. I'm sorry, I just want to make sure um, I'm understanding this correctly. Um. You are in charge. I think I used to be. God, I hope I'm not still. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, essentially. Oh, They're you not- feel very connected to the land. The land is you and you are the land. No. Um, I might still be in charge. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like I'm connected to something here. Um, that's a lot of responsibility for a gnome squidling. Anyways, uh, not the point. I think it might I, be. Yes. If you're going to ask about the, the bodies coming up, that that's 
not a usual occurrence this close to the castle. Right. Um, not to um, put a pin in what we're discussing, but um, you have a bone or a treat for Mugen for being such a good dog and um, wasting that one so quickly. When I hear the word treat, I got a, so I got a couple. Uh, you probably still have the leg bone of Strahd von Sarovich in your coffin. I don't know oh. how clean Whittle is. <laughs> hmm. I think it's still in her bag of holding. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have just a thing. Wait, wait, wait right there. Yeah. Oh, no. She, she, um, goes over to see if the bag of holding is still there and, um, uses her tentacles to open the top of the bag. Um, and the, first half of her body kind of dives into the bag, being very careful not to fall in because bad things happen when you fall in. Um, she finds the leg and reaches out with it and says, Mogan, good boy, here you go. And throws the leg at him. <laughs> just Mogan just goes and uh, Gail, are you still on me or did you jump off? Oh no, still hanging on tightly. Incredible. Um, we like a, a little blur of like gold with a little mouse in the back just goes after the bone. And I'm doing a thing tiny where- little like, <laughs> oh no, okay. <laughs> and uh, I bring the bone back to everybody. Um, and I just get on the ground that I'm eating it and trying to crack into the marrow. As you are cracking into the marrow, Strahd von oh, Sarovich's leg bone, <laughs> you get an opportunity for a dark gift. You see, you hear a whisper in the darkness. Logan. Hi. <laughs> bring me back. Hi, what? That's what? That's what? Bring the rest of me back. What? Who is this? What? Can you hear that? Hey, Gail, can you hear that? I will bring you all the bones you could ever <gasps> want. Bring me back. The what, Mugen? There's a voice in my bone. Hey, oh, God. Uh, Mugen, what does the voice sound like? Uh, cool guy. Cool guy. Don't listen to him. Do not what pay attention goals? to the squidling. <laughs> what did he just say about me? Don't pay attention to squidling. Are you squidling? She is a betrayer. I, I didn't. Oh, is he still talking about me? Don't listen to him. Yes. He gets no. inside your head. She very often eats dogs. <gasps> do, you eat, do you eat dogs? I would never eat a dog. I don't even like eating things. I I was a dog here for 400 years. I like to drink blood, but never dog's blood. Oh, blood sounds good. Okay, hey, bone voice. I'm really busy. And I I, I snap the bone in half with my teeth. <laughs> and, I, and I'm looking the marrow out. We're going to talk about what happens to you later. Uh, you feel oh, no. great. <laughs> as, the, as you swallow the very marrow of Strahd von Sarovich, and you feel that it's, de marrow's delicious, especially when cooked. This is not so much cooked, but you feel it drop down your throat and slowly absorb into your stomach. And there's a little bit of blood in that marrow. And you feel it absorb into your body. Tastes like chicken. Is it chicken bone? <laughs> no. Pest, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, what, so Pest never knew Strahd. I came long after Strahd, so that right. I have no real connection to. But someone is saying bad things about my friend. Even though my friend is now a different friend, she's still my friend. Um, and so, so as, uh, as, I just blanked on, Mugen, sorry. Uh, as Mugen is chomping on the, uh, on the bone, I just want to, go over to to squiddle and now look if he's try is he trying to 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 come back or or, or, t or take back over or something do we need to worry about that i i don't know if he's trying to take over but i i do know that the dark powers of barovia mm -hmm. have to hire someone else to replace the previous leader of barovia i think i got that right so maybe since mugen just ate strahd Mugen can be the new leader of Barovia. 
Well, it would certainly be a change. Yeah, that's when you smell all of it, Gail. Gail, you smell an army of zombies crawling out of the dirt. All of them rising out of the mud all around you. And that they had pushed the coffin out. And there are hundreds of zombies. Some of them missing limbs. Crawling up the hill, marching towards all of you. And towards the castle, Raymond Loft. Um, are those friendlier than they look? Nope. There's... One of their jaws just falls off onto the ground. <laughs> are we still in initiative? <laughs> we think we're about to be. <laughs> you're not. You're we not, not go. in initiative. <laughs> <laughs> do you um, want to do? You, who who is up next? I believe that was. Eugenio? That's oh. Eugenio. Eugenio, I is see. there anything you want to do? <laughs> you have not sound? seen this? Oh, I haven't seen them. Oh, uh, No, no, you have not seen this happen before. Oh, this yes. is all wrong. And this storm uh, has been going on for days. Oh, well, that's not good. And now, now, uh, Squiddle is different. Squiddle. And, and sound the retreat! Uh, and <laughs> I'm going to look around for Moth, who I'm sure is gone, and just Moth start... is totally gone. Oh, Moth yeah. is just like, no. <laughs> A wall, just as this. I run, yelling, A wall, Moth, you will be brought up on the tribunal <laughs> of me and me twice more. That's three. It's tri it doesn't matter. Fantastic. Uh, what else are you doing? Anything um, other than screaming? Well, at Moth? after after a couple of steps of this retreat, when I realize that I I don't think anyone is immediately following me, I turn back around. All right, to the death then, and I begin to. Uh, I begin to wiggle my uh, my spikes, uh, and this like brown sort of goo comes out of all of the spikes and encases me, and then sort of hardens. And when it's done hardening, it looks like uh, tree bark because I just cast bark skin on myself. Uh, but it doesn't. I mean, it's not. It's not pleasant to watch. It's not a good spell to observe. Uh, and and I'm just like half up in my little L shape with my. My legs sort of waving, ready to... Because apparently, you know, no one retreated. So I guess we're taking them down. <laughs> it's, uh, it's like pest... Uh, wooden exoskeleton, if you will. Yeah, it does it all the time. It's pretty cool. All right. Oh, uh, I do think so. <laughs> Squiddle, what are you doing? You're number five. And it's so many zombies. <laughs> it's so bad. Um, <laughs> so w Whittle sees all these zombies coming out of the ground, and she just wants to burn them all with fire and so her her little tendrils come up and start undulating and she's not really used to casting spells in this form and she's really hoping it's going to work the way that she wants it to and um using sculpt spell as not to injure my friends here i will cast agonize agonazar's scorcher okay what's it the save a, on that a dex 12 well i mean zombies are very dexterous that's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> and as as she is casting uh, Agonazar Scorcher for a brief moment, she has a craving for brains that she ignores and just continues casting the spell to kill them so that she will stop having this craving. All right, they fail. Go and roll your damage. And yes, you do smell brains. And Eight. they smell good. 18? These are probably not great. It's like, I don't know, like it's fast food, but this fast food's been gone wrong. Mm. You sense that maybe if it was fresh, it would be delicious. Go ahead and roll your damage. Squiddle's just taking mental notes. Um, 18? <laughs> 18 is the damage? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> What's the radius of the spell again? Uh, it's 30 feet long and five feet wide. So I guess she she tried to center it where the highest concentration of zombies were. Yeah, they're they're making their way towards the drawbridge and you just burn a path through the zombies and they just all turn into ash. And some of the limbs get burned away as well as these are straw zombies and their limbs start crawling independently, moving around absent, uh, absent of their body. And then is their turn. 
Gail, what's your armor class? Oh, I don't like that question. <laughs> <don't know>. 13. <laughs> One minute. One's... The mine. They, I mean, and to you, these zombies are giants. So they're just swinging randomly at you. And that one hits. So three of them like swing and miss, and then one of them finally strikes you. In fact, it tries to bite and eat you. And you take four points of damage as it bites your tail. Mm. Not the tail. Mugen, what's your AC? Oh, that's a miss. Uh, it's actually, I, I miscalculated. It's 16. That's a miss. Yay! Weirdly enough, they can get the rat, but they're bobbing. You're bobbing and weaving between all these zombies that are trying to grab you. They're trying to hold hold you down and eat you. All of them miss. What's your armor class, Yanio? Sixteen Six? at the moment. Sixteen. Oh. oh, that one's a dirty twenty. Well, bring it on. <laughs> and two hit you. Yeah, bring it on. And they are also trying to bite. Oh, well. Three points of damage. Another three points of biting damage. Okay. They sink their teeth into you. And suddenly... There's so little of me. <laughs> they've kind of got you in your ma in the maw. And you all see that his, the zombie that is holding Pest in its mouth... Its eyes start glowing green with magical energy as it starts crackling out of Pest. And its skin, almost still undead, seems to get smoother oh. and more lifelike. Oh, thanks, I hate it. <laughs> what, is Whittle, what is Squiddle's armor class? 11. But I also have a shield reaction if I need it. <laughs> You might want to use that. So like, uh, three of the attacks hit. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and use that. Yeah. All the zombies seem to be trying to pile onto Squiddle, forming almost like a meat shield all around Squiddle at this moment. And Squiddle is completely encapsulated. It is all of your, uh, we are back at the top. And you just see them as every time you see lightning. And then you see, um, give me perception checks, Mugen and Gale. I expect you are the most perceptive. Uh, that's an 18. <laughs> nice. Uh, that is a, ooh, uh, 21. Wow. Okay. Both of you notice right away, this is all horrifying and terrible, but then you see these, <laughs> the graveyard in the distance and all of the undead are rising up. Does anyone have Arcana? I do actually. Yes. Okay. Go ahead and give me an Arcana check. Oh, it was so close to a nat one, but it's a 23. <laughs> oh. <laughs> not now, Dice, not now. <laughs> How long has Pest existed as a familiar? I think he's lost count, but at least, I mean, he's been in Barovia for 100 years, and he was around at least uh, 100, 150 years before that. And you were amongst mages for a very long time. Mm -hmm. You almost know the scent of magic. Mm. This smells like a lich. This smells like a Zalen sent a welcoming party oh. to Barovia. Oh, we. Uh, and you've smelled a Zalen's magic before. Uh huh. Uh uh. Rich, I, I sound the retreat again. Believe me this time, we should retreat. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I. <laughs> You are my favorite, well. Mugen. You could teach I, a thing or two to my core. I run over and for my, well, for my action, I'm not sure how far away Pest is. I want to pick, is Pest still in the mouth? Hold on. Is Pest still yeah, in the Pest mouth? Yeah, Pest is still in the mouth. F. Um, my action is to go and grab Pest Aww. from that mouth with my mouth, oh. but not hurt Pest, I guess. Yeah, okay, a, I'll allow it. Hurt me. It's okay. Contest, I don't <laughs> What's the mouth contest in that one? How do we? Do you still have your bark up? Strength check. I do. That's true. I do still have my bark up. That's true. Yeah. You got your bark uh, up. <laughs> yeah. That is a eight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Let's see what it gets. Oh, it got a nine. F. Yep. Mm. A few of its teeth come out as you're like pulling, trying to pull Pest. Pest, you are between a death dog pulling you out and a zombie and its teeth are being pulled out as well as they're both in a contest to hold on to you in their mouth. What are you doing, Kale? Uh, I would like to try and assist, actually. I'd like <laughs> to try and... Gale's going to use his little hind legs to kind of get purchase on Mugen's top head. Okay. And he's going to try and do a little... Uh, a nice little stabby stabby to hopefully get them to let Pest go. Okay, go ahead and make an attack roll. Hit armor class of eight. Okay. I never thought I'd be in this position again. <laughs> I love how micro our fighting is, by the way. We're just really concentrating one little bit of it. What? What'd you get? 20 of the yeah. Yay! First Yay! Yay! Oh, wow. Nice. All right. Well, I mean, double your damage. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. It's going to be so rough. I'm, what, so, nice. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so ready. Oh! <laughs> Your, your total okay. is six? That's yeah. a double? My yeah. total is six. It it's a double crit, four. and I want you, within your comfort zone, tell me how you do this. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay, so... How do you stop a zombie? <laughs> Excellent question. Love it. Thank you for asking. Um, so, Gale has a rapier that, it, like, if, if you look at it from far away, it might look like somebody just shrunk a rapier down to rat size but upon closer inspection you can see it, it's like it's been made by forging together multiple like sewing needles that have been wrapped around with clearly what looks like somebody's like leathery shoelaces or like a, a tie that's on their shirt or something that you know he has as a little handle on it and uh i'm picturing kind of on the the zombie's face that as as there's bits of them that are falling off and maybe little concave bits here and there, uh, that what it is that Gale does to get Pest out of his mouth is he's going to dig the rapier into one of those little concave bits, and with all of his less than one pound strength, he's going to shove his his tiny little body forward. And I think, I think because Gale and Mugen have been working together for so long that it's almost like as he starts to swing like this, Mugen kind of knows to swing her head forward a little bit. So there's like, eat. Gail <laughs> thinks that it's his momentum, but maybe, maybe <laughs> Mugen, I guess you could say maybe oh. Mugen was helpful. I got to get uh, a mini of the mouse put on my head and show. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, I think it's, it's like the, the pressure point of this rapier hitting right where it does that it just goes back the head goes back long enough that it would trip and fall back and the impact is what would do it more than the actual hit that gale rapier did. goes right into the like the brain and it hits like a nerve ending and it just just stops and its jaw opens up and it just falls over as you pierce it right in the right undead nerve ending and it collapses to the ground and starts rolling down the hill and you are free pest uh, well, that was that was exciting. I feel limber. I feel, I feel stretched and ready to go. We should go inside. There's a lot more of them still. You've got a few teeth still in you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> can't tell where the about. spike begins and the tooth ends. Yeah, what are you doing with your action? Uh, uh, pest? <laughs> crying softly. No. Um, <laughs> That's Aww. a legit action. It's a free action. <laughs> thank you. Oh my god, thank you. Uh... <laughs> No, I'm uh I'm going to I'm going to encourage uh the retreat some more uh and and then I'm going to uh can I do this? Yes, I can. Uh I'm going to make uh just to sort of like delay the hordes as we take off. Uh, I'm going to turn around and wiggle my spines again. Uh and this time all of my my black eye be my eye beads turn like pitch void black. Uh and they sort of uh they exude this sort of sh this black shadow uh that goes and creates a 10 foot sphere i am casting wither and bloom and all of the zombies in this area whatever that wants to be uh would make constitution saving throws uh, but really it's just more about 
keeping them at bay while we hopefully run. <laughs> what does what does the spell do? Uh, so I invoke both life and death upon a 10 foot radius sphere centered on a point that I am putting sort of just in front of us. Uh, each creature of my choice in that area, which would be whatever zombies I can catch, uh, make a constitution saving throw or take 2d6 necrotic damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful one. Non-magical vegetation in that area also withers. Um, and if I had gotten any of us in the area of the spell, uh, it also allows us to use hit points to heal, but that's not what this is about. Uh, go and roll your damage. They failed. All right. It's a whopping eight necrotic damage for these admittedly ne rather necrotic creatures, but hey, the, it's about they, keeping they, them back. <laughs> you, they, they, they rot even more until they are in fact skeletons and within the radius, and they just kind of clump to the ground as you kill a bunch more of them. We should go, Ooh. and I'll start backing up, uh, but sort of weirdly insisting on keeping myself like the last of the retreat, like between the zombies and the rest even though I am, in fact, a whole inch tall in my L. <laughs> All right. Uh, Squiddle, what are, what are you doing at this moment? How many... Are there still tons of zombies everywhere? Oh, way too many. Just... Okay. Just, just so many. too many. And also your body in a coffin exposed. Oh. Uh, oh okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so... I feel like I got to get my body before we retreat anymore. So um, I'm going to go do that. <laughs> and Squiddle's going to run out towards the coffin and attempt to pull it back towards the group. What was the radius? Pest? 10 foot sphere. That 10, that 10 foot sphere is gone. And you, cool. Squiddle, you run over to the coffin and start wrapping your tendrils and start what's your strength <laughs> uh it's my dump stat so <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, no. we're all so tiny so what's your strength eight, eight, eight with a negative tech. one <laughs> go and roll uh 14 what <laughs> yeah that's pretty good yeah, you move it about an inch, your own coffin. <laughs> and that's a good moment to allow everyone a brief break. We will be right back, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for joining our show. I know it's weird, it's creepy, it's disgusting, and it's what you should have expected from all of us. So we will be back in about, what, seven minutes? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah okay. sounds we'll, good. We will be right back as, uh, well, someone tries to save their own self <laughs> in a coffin. <laughs> When does this ever happen? This right. this got way weirder than I thought it would. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> we'll be right back, everybody.
Hello, everyone. Welcome back to a familiar quest. It may probably not feel very familiar. Uh, we are breaking new ground in the world of D&D. And at this moment, on the very foothill of Castle Ravenloft, right before the drawbridge, we find our heroic familiars staving off an attack of zombies erupting out of the ground, crawling out of the graveyards, all moving surrounding Castle Ravenloft. And Squiddle, formerly Lord of Barovia, still kind of Lord of Barovia, tendrils wrapping around its own coffin where it's sleeping dampier form, vampire form in its coffin, trying to drag itself to safety at this very moment. Pest just erupting necrotic energy over all the zombies, shredding them to pieces. And that's where we find ourselves. You are... For a moment, not an initiative. What are you all doing as you see Squiddle trying to drag her own coffin? For an entire what? action, Squiddle has, has been thinking that they have been moving this coffin at least back to where their friends are. And she gets up, or they get up and looks at the coffin, looks back at their friends. <sighs> hey, hey, Mugen. <laughs> Mugen, can you, can you help me with something real quick? Okay. Squiddle over. may think that Squiddle is actually dragging the coffin. The coffin keeps sliding down the mud towards <laughs> the zombies. And uh, Squiddle levitates. So Squiddle's just kind of like mm, grinding <laughs> levitate right into the mud, into a big, no. like, growing pile of dirt. Um, uh, in my adventures pack, I do have 50 feet of hemp and rope. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> On your back. <laughs> Wait, oh, also, I forgot to mention minute. when I was describing, yeah, <laughs> describing my character, I have a cape of billowing. You're allowed to pick, like, one kind of cool item, and mine's useless. It's just <laughs> it's just a cool blue cape, and it goes, and that's it. Yes. Anyways, so under that cape, there's Love some it. stuff. A little pouchy. A little pouchy. I have a question, so though, I, have, I need to know. Yes. Does the cape have two hoods for both heads? Oh, this cape doesn't have hoods. Why would it have Okay, I was just asking. I just wanted mm. to know for my visual. No, I'm one, of, I'm one of those dogs that when you put something on my head, I go, <laughs> I oh, okay, I got you. No. The only thing I let on my head is Gale. That's because that must have been real rough for Gale at first. <laughs> <laughs> Mo a flashback montage of me going, no, no, like, no, no. <laughs> 500 years later. <laughs> um, so I kind of, I go over to uh, to Squiddle and um, I sort of like, I get down on the ground and I sort of lean over so that my pouch is like visible and I'm like, I think there's some rope in there. I can pull it. Do you want me to pull it? Wait, wait a minute, you brought rope? <laughs> That's a nice cape, by the way. It's a nice blue hue. Yeah, that would be great. If you could um, take out the rope and uh, I'll tie oh, it around the other out. side. I can't take out the rope. I just have it. Gail, can you get the rope? I can't, I can't get it. It's on my back. <laughs> Gail oh. didn't even wait to be asked. Like, as soon as Gail heard the word rope, you kind of see him go like, and you see him start to scuttle down and oh, you he's nosing through Mugen's stuff trying to find a rope that's I would I I would assume the thickness of it is like as big as Gale is yeah but you're a rat you know ropes right like I you do. travel on them they're like rat highways for you so you you're, you're you, you've gone to ships you've gone on to you know uh nautiloids you, you you've stowed probably you've seen the world through ropes and weird electronic cords so yeah you got this um, so you, you are able to move the rope in any way that you see fit. Gail is going to kind of, um, like use his head and his little snuffly nose to track down where the rope is. And then you see his paws move like super, super, super fast. And he does that thing almost like when dogs are digging a hole and they start going really quickly. Mm -hmm. He's doing it to kind of shift the rope bit by bit to go behind him a little bit. So he's kind of like pulling it towards him. And then he'll try to drop his weight once it gets to the side of Mugen, and he'll try and uh, drop down with it, and then kind of keep a little a little piece in his mouth and run it over to Mugen. And okay, perfect. If I mean, if you want to take the action, you can attach it to the coffin. There's like little hinges on the coffin for when you know pallbearers you know, walk yeah. with it. So grim. I am. I would like to be as helpful as possible, so. Okay. Uh, can you give me a survival check? Ooh. I sure can. For your rope. Well, 
Gail is doing that. I just uh, mentioned to Squiddle. Oh, yeah, I can't grab things with my hands because I'm a dog. So I just use my mouth and Gail just, Gail does everything else. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. So, you know, you, you, you kind of threw me when you had the rope. So you both make a incredible team and I see why you survived as many years as you did together. Well done. Yeah, Gail, put, Gail put it on my back. I didn't put it there. Gail oh, stands on his hind legs and you see him spread his little rat fingers and he goes, hey, uh, that's a 13 for survival. Perfect. I love yes, it. you you have uh, attached the rope right now uh, to uh, the formerly Straw von Servage's coffin, currently Whittle's coffin, <clears throat> with Whittle's vampiric form inside of it, the Lord of Barovia, as a horde, an army of zombies are approaching. Uh, what are you doing, Pest? I am standing the defensive wall between my friends <laughs> and this horde of zombies. I imagine waving. you're on top of the coffin. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> watching, watching Gale run and tie and just st- come at me, but not too quickly because I have to get this tied first. Perfect. Just Are you ready. doing anything um, other than talking I, smack at the zombies? <laughs> I sure do wish that I was, but I just <laughs> don't know that I am. Um, <laughs> I no, I'm not even preparing a spell. I think I'm just standing up on the coffin, being well. I think I'm being intimidating. I'm gonna say you. You are. You're in. Your intimidating nature is inspiring as a tiny worm with a scarf uh, to <laughs> everyone involved. So, yes. uh, whoever is the strongest member of the party, give me strength <laughs> checks from each person at advantage. Oh, okay. As this tiny worm, <laughs> full of teeth, <sighs> is yelling at zombies, and you understand it. You're right. There's a lot of details that are really wild. Got 13. Uh, 16 for me. Whoa. I know. I'm rolling just in case, but um, <laughs> that was, uh, oh, I rolled a two, and I have a minus one for strength. So one. one. <laughs> oh, yeah, one. One. Perfect. One. Yeah. You're like, on the other side of the coffin <laughs> with I, I all the zombies Gale, behind you. I think Gail really does think that he's helping, though. You know? What? <laughs> Absolutely. Pest, what other what other smack talk are you yelling at the oh, zombies? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's uh come come and get us! Look, you drop your jaw and and I'm gonna pick it up and hit it with you, but but you have to bring it to me because I uh, take me a while to get over there. Lightning crackles as you're trying to push Gale the coffin up the hill to the drawbridge, and you're like <laughs> using all your strength, and you're pretty sure this is all you. Uh, you see the form of Pest, this worm that you've just met as lightning crackles behind him as he's screaming at zombies. And you drag the coffin onto the drawbridge at this exact moment, sliding across on the mud and the slime. And I... Ooh, I'm sorry, Pest, but I need a dexterity saving do it. throw because... Do it. I was going to ask to do it if you didn't tell me on the drawbridge, <laughs> and there is yeah. a large crevasse below um, all of you. Absolutely. That is an eight, and I couldn't be happier, to be honest. <laughs> the coffin goes over the side <gasps> of the drawbridge and starts suddenly swinging down, and the rope you got about 50 feet, you said? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 50. 50 feet of rope starts running out. What are you doing? Oh. Gail, do, oh, uh, fetch? Don't fetch. Which one? I don't know. <laughs> uh, don't, don't fetch. <laughs> uh, you do know Arcana from Pest and Squill, you know this. Running water, vampires, bad. Death. Uh, 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 since Squiddle can technically levitate, um, <laughs> can I just kind of float and try to grab the rope and, and at least stabilize it from falling any further? Yeah, is it in the water or is it just, is it still? Being- it's no, I mean, it's Dang. hundreds of feet down for, yeah, no. So it's not in the water yet. It's falling and the rope is running out. It's just like spinning, oh, okay. whipping around at this moment. I Squilly. grab the rope in my teeth also. All right. Strength checks all around. Okay. 
I don't want school to die. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. That is a 20, 21, 22. That's Holy crazy. crap. Nice. That's good. You grab yeah. the rope between both of your teeth and you're just like, you <laughs> yank the coffin, this vampire coffin with a tiny gnome inside of it. And you yank it onto the drawbridge, sliding into Castle Ravenloft at the same time. And it's with the veracity that is a little like you already made it, but you're still running. <laughs> and the coffin is just whipping left and right. I need dexterity saving throws from anyone who's not writing Mugen, which is a weird thing to say. Wait, was was uh it's like a still... fish tail? It's like a fish tailing <laughs> car right now. When, when Mugen whipped it around with squiddle still holding on to the rope did squiddle go with it oh yeah yeah i need it here yeah you went with it <laughs> it was more force than you were prepared for <laughs> just the squiddle little. is just like a kite. yeah and you're levitating right yeah you're yeah you don't need to make a dexterity saving throw you are a kite in a hurricane right now you are just holding on with one tentacle floating back and forth yes. Pest, I need a dexterity saving throw yeah. did i manage to hang on to the coffin in the first place i guess was my question uh, you, you were unable to control the coffin. Oh, now okay, okay, you're okay. trying to got stay it, on it. the coffin. <laughs> got it, got it, got it. Oh, that's a nat 20. <laughs> that's a nat 20? Oh, yeah. Yay! Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I wanted like... Pest to fall off his coffin so bad, but something about that image just made me laugh. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You... Slow motion. All of you make it across the drawbridge. You enter Castle Ravenloft. Blue flame kind of erupts as you cross the barrier to the castle. And you're there, and then you see the coffin sliding, and on top of it, you see Pest just drifting on Strahd's coffin, on Wizzle's coffin, on top of it, sideways, and just looking at you like, if you're not out of control, if you're not out of control, you're not in control. That's right. Yes, exactly that. <laughs> is that a quote from the Fast and the Furious, or what do you Yes, think? it is. <laughs> <laughs> but coming from a worm. And you're you're sliding jaw Castle Ravenloft. Cool, pest. <laughs> you all, uh, who, who's got the, the highest passive perception? Just throw it out there. 17. Dang. <laughs> Look. Not me. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all shame faces. I know. We don't need to talk about numbers. You're like, it's okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't ask. No, no. So close. Oh, you're close. But, oh. but not me. Pest, you see the mechanism that that is just way more gears than are necessary. Uh, <laughs> springs, little levers, couple weights. There's a couple of like undead hamsters. You know, like all of this makes yeah. the drawbridge work, right? And there's a little bit of electricity too. So it's a you know, uh, you see the lever right away that you need to pull to tr draw up the drawbridge. Uh, it's probably why they call it that. I, I okay. <laughs> I'm going. But you to, don't have to do it. <laughs> well, I'm going to leap <laughs> for the lever. I'm now so I, <laughs> I want to be very clear, and I feel like I should say this just as a blanket statement going forward. I never. I maybe, maybe never. Definitely not often. Expect for the things that I say Pest does to, to work, seeing as how he's a two inch long worm. So yes. feel free to whatever, but Pest is going to leap for the lever in an attempt to land on it and pull it down. Uh, how does Pest leap? Do you just Not slinky well. it? Do you just like um, ratchet? <laughs> it's like this, yeah, it, it's a combination of slinking because I do like fold up a little bit, but it's also my, my little like, arm things sort of hinge in the middle in a very upsetting way and yeah, then okay. they sort of and then they you know just all straighten at once I, mostly it's a vertical one i don't know how much lateral distance i really get with this jump uh I maybe some ac acrobatics or athletics <laughs> well one of them's a plus two and the other one's a minus two so we'll go with acrobatics would, would squiddle be able to help with the coffin since the lid is basically <laughs> spring-loaded uh, it's the lever. Yeah, you can get the help action. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's what that that's what I'll do. Hey, hey, Pest, you want to stand on top of this coffin? You want to try something cool real quick? Um, yeah, just right, good. you stand. Oh, that's you stand voice, here, not and mine. then, <laughs> and then uh, I'm gonna. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna press down on the lid, and um, 
release it so that pest gets yes. catapulted into you're the launching air. pest okay There's a perfect. lot of yeah. screaming uh, i'm but launching I pest i did get 18 on that acrobatics uh with the assistance you are catapulted <laughs> onto the lever yes. for castle ravenloft drawbridge <laughs> yeah and you pull uh, it down yeah the drawbridge comes up and you just hear the horde of zombies fall down the cliff into the water at first one body two bodies three and then it's just raining zombies uh, down into the water hundreds of feet below until the land around you is empty of zombies but the river is full yes what do you all do victory oh we did it oh i haven't had a successful campaign like that in years <laughs> So it's it's nice to meet you, Mugen and Kale. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm Squiddle, I guess. <laughs> this is my home. Been living here for about, I don't know, 400 years. Met Pest about 100 years ago. And uh, my, my memory's a little hazy. I, I think Pest, you had a professor a long time ago, and I didn't oh. like him, so I killed him. Oh. Sorry, what? Your, your professor? Yes, yes, of course. I haven't seen him in many years. Uh, I haven't either. I think I might have... You know, my memory's a little hazy. We, we could talk about that later. Oh, do you mean Pest's uh, 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 mas master daddy? Who, master who, who oh, no, take care of Pest? So <laughs> You know, Pest, sometimes, sometimes our masters go away because they go to the farm. That's what Gail told me. So they're fine. They're just at the farm. They're having a good time. And uh, we'll see them again when we go to the farm. Yeah. I've had lots of masters go to the farm. Hundreds. That nice is a farm. The happy farm that they're all so happy to visit because it helps Mugen sleep at night. Yeah, of course, yes, the farm. My only issue is, you know, I didn't, I don't think I realized uh, that that uh, the professor's trip to the farm was paid for by a friend. Um, but you know, he, he, he was living here, I think. Um, so if you die here, you, you can't escape here. So he'll, he'll come back. Oh, Barovia has its own farm. That's nice. Can we go? Uh, you're in it. The castle's a farm. It's all a farm. You stay here. Oh, yeah. Um. So, anyways, I I have some guest rooms and accommodations for you all, Mugen. There's uh in the kitchen we have uh, a bunch of bones, and oh. Gail. I'm sure we can find some some other swords for you of your liking. Um, Gail sized. Absolutely. So you don't have to use a needle anymore, but you're, you're pretty handy with the thing. It's really impressive. Thanks, I made it myself. <laughs> so um, this is my humble abode. Long time ago, uh, I think I destroyed it because I didn't like the, the previous tenant. And so we've been doing some renovations. But now that you live here, um, I, would I would love your feedback. Right, well, um, first piece of feedback, um, if we're you know, spitballing ideas, um, the zombies sound like a permanent thing. Like a, sometimes that happens, sometimes no, that it doesn't. That was a little different than what I'm used to seeing. You know, every once in a while, um, as I said earlier, my my daily routine is to go out and make sure none of the bodies are coming up out of the graveyards. But it's it's usually like a, a little toe or like. A, a head that, that pops up every once in a while. This, I've never seen an entire army of undead. Do you think it's because this water comes from the sky and makes the ground real squishy so it's easier for them to get up? That, that could be it. Is so... the, There's a really bad storm around Castle Ravenloft right now and I'm not really sure why. Yeah, we saw it when we came in and it looked like there's just a storm over here, but not anywhere else. Did you make a rain guy mad? 
Mm. My memory's a little hazy, but I don't I don't think Whittle ever made a rain guy mad. <laughs> I don't remember any rain guys. <laughs> I mean, mm. she made she made a lot of people angry, but not that one. And you just see Mugen, there's like arithmetic going like past her face, like, hmm, interesting. Mm. <laughs> what a mystery. Um, you mentioned us staying. Uh, what do we need to do in exchange for that? Well, that's a good question. I've been making some renovations in other parts of Barovia too, because I've been doing experiments. I don't remember on what but I've been doing underground experiments and it's been causing lots of earthquakes. I don't think it caused the earthquake that just happened, but the earthquakes caused a lot of structural damage in town. And so I've been going around just making sure every, everyone's establishments are in, in business and not falling apart. Um, making sure that none of those gargoyles come to life. If they're squidlings, they're fine. If they're not, you got, you got to knock him out. Other than that, my home is your home. What kind of experiments are you doing? What are you trying to make happen? I don't remember exactly. And I wish I did. I know it's because I, I wanted to go on vacation outside of Barovia, but of course, come back from pest for pest. Um, but I don't remember exactly. I, I probably need to, to go below ground and see what I was doing. So I should probably do that now, actually. And she's, she's going to like waddle away on her tendrils, making her way into Castle Ravenloft. I automatically just follow because I follow anyone who tried to leave the group. <laughs> he was going to turn to Pest and say, so how did you do that move? earlier the uh, I've, been, I've, been, I've been trying to get the, the wind resistance down on my whiskers a bit lately and i've just found that i'm not quite hitting my stride um how how did you get the 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 velocity that you did in that move there um just to be clear are we talking about the leap or the <laughs> yes the okay leap. great okay great um Oh, well, you did. You, uh, um, sorry, I've lost the voice. Uh, hello, no, that's close enough. Uh, 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 well, uh, years of training, uh, you see, Gail. You've really got to build up the leg strength, you know. Um, and then, of course, I had help. I, I had help from, from Squiddle. Mm, Squiddle's your Mugen. Well, I thought so. Oh. What? What do you mean? Well, apparently, the Squiddle... Pess looks around and assumes Mugen is not within earsight and says, all right, just to be very clear, neither one of... We both understand that there's no farm, right? That's a thing that we get. Oh, when I do the... Yeah, all oh, right. That's what that means. Oh, that's what that... I suppose I... And, like, a whole... All of the, like, eye beads down his side, like, very creepily, like... They don't blink. They just sort of like vibrate in a way where the light flashes off of them, sort of like a very upsetting wink. And he's like, "I got, I got it, I got it." Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I suppose it's all to the better. I, I just didn't know about about the professor, but, but I think it's all right. I mean, I, uh, right? I mean, there's worse things. I, I, soldiers fall in the line of battle every day. Got it. Where did our friends go? Um, um, Mugen is following uh, Squiddle very close um, and just asking way too many questions. Mm -hmm. Hi, what's going on? <laughs> what's your favorite color? What's go What's over here? What's wall gray? How come the ground's dirt? Where's the, what, what, is there a what, worm named Bob who lives here? What's, hi, hello. And I'm just too many, there's too many. I'm following uh, you. I'm trapped. My favorite color is black. The okay. ground is weird because uh, it's undead dirt, I guess. I forgot the other questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's okay. I'll ask him again later. Where are we going? What's going on? Where are we going? Oh, what? Uh, hey, hey, Pest? Gail? <laughs> you, oh. you coming? 
I think I hear Squiddle. Uh, shall we, Gail? After you. Oh, thank you. Yes. Uh, we'll join. I bark roll out so they just to make sure they know where we are because I'm worried they might not. <laughs> just, it's too loud. <laughs> you <clears throat> move down into the very bowels of Castle Ravenloft, these spiraling uh, stone staircases into after it feels like forever, like maybe you're almost at the bottom of the chasm where the river is and you can hear the river, especially you past roaring above. That's how deep you've gone underneath Castle Ravenloft. You find a laboratory filled with clones, the same vampire gnome, hundreds of them, all in glass tubes, just clones almost as far as I can see. Are these your friends? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so apparently past me has been making more me's. Thank you, past me. <laughs> Every once in a while when you get close to one, a hand reaches out, not sentient, but instinctually. Maybe it senses blood through the glass. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, hi. <laughs> can they just Squiddle, can they not hear up the glass? <laughs> just yeah. Yeah. Squiddle, can they not hear me? Why don't you let them out? Should I open one? No, 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 no. don't do that. Hmm. Um, it they don't really seem like. They have a, a personality, and that's a little concerning. I I don't know exactly what what Whittle was intending on doing with all of these, but they're they're a little scary. And in comes that craving again. Uh oh. And Squiddle kind of ignores it. And I can I do like a investigation roll or anything to see if there's anything else down here that can tell us what Whittle was trying to use these clones for? Yeah, go ahead. Do you think Whittle would have ever mentioned it to Pest? That's between you two. Do you think Whittle would have mm. ever mentioned it to Pest? <laughs> <laughs> I, think because, I think because Whittle and Pest had been friends for a hundred years, you, you start to understand your friends' routines, uh -huh. and you know when they're lying to you. Uh -huh. So I think Pess probably knew something okay. was up. Okay. Like, like maybe you heard her say clone, but then she like corrected herself, and she was like mm. drone. I don't know what that is. That's a different <laughs> universe. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, so not re so like, I'm not super surprised, but I don't really know. I can't help you. Okay, got it. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Gail is um, gonna scurry really quickly while this is happening and climb up Mugen's uh, tail and nestle like his little head is going to hide at the back of Mugen's neck. He really does not like this. So I rolled a six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't know what you were doing down here quite yet. <laughs> There's another earthquake in the stones fall from the ceiling and start oh. cracks open up in the wall and gail you see a black door no light you see a black door far down the hallway you do do squibble because you've been there this is where Strahd's coffin used to lie a place Filled with negative energy where no life could exist. And the door slowly creaks open on its hinges. Do you do? It, do we still have the coffin? Yeah. Well, it's upstairs. <laughs> oh, okay. What can I smell from here? Is, is there any smell kind of like wafting through when the door starts to open? <laughs> that old 
trust a give smell. Me, give me a perception check. Ooh, okay. <laughs> oh. I would like everyone to know that um, fun fact, being a rat means you get advantage on uh, perception checks that are based on smell. So oh. if you need a reason to play a rat in your, your next campaign, <laughs> uh, I think I think that's going to be, yeah, that's going to be at 24. Nice. You smell rotting flesh. You smell dragon's breath. You smell the salt air of a distant ocean. You smell fire. You smell the scent of a sad soul. You smell brimstone and sunlight and rain falling. All of it is coming from the room. Um, Squiddle? Yeah? What's behind that door over there? I don't know. Let's go find out. Okay. Gail's going to kind of tug at um, some little strands of fur at the nape of Mugen's neck and is going to lean his little head to whisper in the probably the topmost head's ear. Okay. Moogie, just, um, I don't think this is a fun place. Just be oh. careful, okay? Oh, okay. Uh, so don't lick everything. Don't lick everything. Don't eat any bones you see unless I say so. And not everyone okay. you meet is going to be a friend. Oh, oh, okay. Thanks. Thanks, Gail. You're very smart. Uh, plus, I just had a bone. It was delicious <laughs> and definitely safe. All right. Good, good Mugen. <laughs> and Gail's going to kind of sit back up and you can tell he's stealing himself. Okay, we go <laughs> towards the room. You enter the room and you feel a slight shiver, but none of you are truly alive. You are familiars. You are wrapped up in the weave itself. You feel that negative energy just kind of waft over you that would kill anyone else that was not undead or made purely out of magic. And oh, I see... remember now you can't enter this place unless you're undead. And I didn't know that about you, so that that's good to know, because you, you didn't disintegrate. Oh, we would have disintegrated? Uh-huh. I didn't know that before. We, my memory just came back to me a little bit just now. Sorry this, about that. This room is perfect. Like black obsidian. No flaws. Nothing. And an amber obelisk in the center. And there's a crack in the amber that any of you could fit through. What's this hole for? Gail's going to start uh, something I discovered rats do when they're really excited. It's called popcorning. They jump up really, like, really, really fast, and then they'll kind of do it in circles sometimes. Gail kind of starts popcorning on Mugen's back. So you're just going to feel the little pitter-patter of little tiny rat feet jumping up and down on you. Gail, yeah, what, 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 what? Amber, 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 Amber. You want to go over there? Um, Squiddle, what's that? Do I know what this is, Todd? No, it's always been there, but you've never known what it is. It was here when you killed Strahd. <laughs> I remember seeing it about 400 years ago. I thought it was just some sort of weird statue. Um, I never knew what it was for or what it did, if, if I can do anything with it. Can I roll to see if I know anything about it? You don't. Ooh, you know that is a pillar of this place. You've never Pest, seen it cracked, you, though. That was my question. Yeah. Oh, Pest, little bug. Have you have you ever seen this before? 
Um, Pest has just been transfixed by the obelisk and mm. just sort of shakes his little head and says, um, No. Mm. No, I haven't, but... Isn't there just something about the crack that makes you want to... Yeah, yeah. Know, lick exploring? it, yes. No, well, I'll lick it. I suppose that's a way to explore. Has that crack always been there, Pest? Do you remember? Not that I recall, but you know I don't come down very often from, from the garden. The troops can't handle it if I wear curdles away for too long. But um, no, I don't... I don't think so. There's a feeling about it, isn't there? Something's yeah. off. Should we, should we try to go in? Yes, 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 yes. Gail, can we go? Can we go? Gail, can we go? How, how large is the crack in terms of move-in fitting? <laughs> <laughs> That's it's, my it's tight, but you can squeeze. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Moogie, you wanna? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's go, let's go. Everyone go, together, together, let's go. And I just barrel ahead and I did a thing where uh, when a dog squishes through a small space, I kind of move my shoulder sideways and go like through that way. <laughs> <laughs> you, and, sque um, you squeeze through. And, and Squiddle quickly uh, grabs onto Mugen's tail with her tentacle and mm -hmm. like glances back really quickly at Pest. Are, are, you, are you coming? And holds out her other tentacle. Um, and Pest hesitates for just a second and then sort of says... Um, I've decided I'm not upset, but we should talk. Uh, yeah. I'm so sorry about that. Yes, please. Let's talk later. I also, I have one question. Yeah. What do you think I'm going to grab onto your hand with? I'm a worm. I was going to grab you with my arm. Great. Do it. I just grab wanted it. to see let's if go. you wanted to go before I do it. I appreciate it. the consent check. I really do. It's nice. It's, I like our relationship. Okay, let's go. All right. <laughs> you squeeze through. And that's when you see it. You see a long hallway, one glowing with flames and fire, souls in a vernus, burning, slowly turning from worms into demons. And on the other side of the hallway, you see spirits lost of Ravenloft like against a glass cage, scraping up against that glass, watching you as you pass by. And you move further down the hallway. And that's when you see them. People. Lifeless. Standing. Waiting to be alive for Ravenloft. Replacements. And you notice that some of them might have been wearing the same clothes as the zombies you defeated. And they have no souls. They're staring blankly. As far as the eye can see, soulless creatures, dragonborn, humans, orcs, goblins. And some of them all some of them are naked, some of them are already wearing outfits, warlocks, wizards, clerics, they all are perfectly dressed, but you sense no life in any of them manufactured for this place the shadow fell maybe not just for the shadow fell maybe for the entire multiverse and in the center of all of them you see a shadowy figure made out of black smoke who oh. is here Its back is towards you. 
Why have you come? Hi, hi, uh, the hole was real good and we just fit in it and it was great. Good hole is why we came. Gail, I'm not supposed to talk. All right now, monkey. I'm what? Why are you free? Why are we free? Yes. Are we free? Like we could we, we could leave Barovia free? What is your name? Uh Squiddle. Used to be Whittle. Now it's Squiddle. <laughs> and yours, little worm. Um I'm Hello. I'm a Colonel Pest reporting for duty. Rat. Galahad the Brave. Death Dog. Mookin, Mookie, Mook, Mook, Mookie, Mookin, Mookin, Mook, Mook, and Gail's friend. <laughs> and the shadowy staff appears, and it's almost like skeleton hand for a moment, and it turns. What are you afraid of? You things that never die. But everyone who summons you does. Eventually. What do you want? Treat. Mugen is very, um, what we call treat oriented or treat motivated um so mostly that's how we get her to do things it's like food or bones or things like that um but and who do you think i am <laughs> and the shadowy figure just kind of turns towards all of you and starts drifting Towards us? You think you see it. Would you say? I said, is it drifting towards us? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Whittle is slowly stepping backwards. Squiddle. Are you heroes? Are you villains? Are you devils? Or gods? Well, I'm a gnome squidling. This is a death dog. That's a rat. And that's my friend Pest. The shadowy figure kneels next to Mugen. <laughs> I'm glad we've met. And just tries to pet you. Do you let it? Yes. And it turns its face towards you as a blade erupts out of the staff. I'm death. And you're home. And that's our adventure, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Yes. This has been a familiar <laughs> quest. I, oh, what a fantastic <laughs> cast of people. It's been already such an amazing journey. Uh, Starting with Eugenio, would you like to introduce yourself as if sure. everyone doesn't know who you are? <laughs> uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Eugenio. You might know me as DM Jazzy Hands around the internet. Uh, I am a uh, podcaster, GM, and uh, game designer in the space. Um, you can find me on Twitter most easily to, to find out what other awesome stuff I'm up to these days at DM Jazzy Hands. Uh, but I'll be here on Mondays with this awesome crew, and I'm very excited about it. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, I do have a D&D podcast. Um, we are dropping our first episode of season nine in just a couple of weeks. Uh, it's called The Last Refuge. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at DND Last Refuge. Uh, I'm a cast member for Water Rivals of Waterdeep. We're starting up our 12th season, just a couple of weeks on February 6th. Uh, and I do occasionally stream to my own channel here on Twitch so you can come hang out while I 
am easily startled by everything any video game ever has to throw at me. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's me. All right. Uh, Michelle, sorry my voice is stuck in dark mode. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name is Michelle Wynn Bradley. Um, I had so much fun, by the way, Todd. Oh my God. I, I'm like, Oh, I feel so excited. Um, hi, I'm Michelle Bradley. You can find me at I'm Trippy Bunny, which is probably down there somewhere um, on Twitter and TikTok. I just started using. It's been real fun. Uh, and Instagram also. Uh, I am here every Monday now. And on Tuesday nights, you can find me at twitch.tv slash hyper RPG. I do a show called Outbreak Undead. It's zombies. It's very serious. I cry almost every episode because I get so scared that water just comes out of my eyes. So that's super fun. That la last week, it happened within the first 30 minutes. So tune in at 6 p.m. to see me cry. So scared. Um, I also do uh, <laughs> some voiceover work. Um, and I do uh uh just rpg stuff everywhere all the time uh you might have seen me on critical role when i did the older scrolls online mini campaign which was super fun and uh actually right now uh i just uh did a guest uh appearance on the sailor moon fan club podcast um i've been a lifelong sailor moon fan my wedding was sailor moon themed that's right Aww. i did that shit and um i talk a lot about that uh, over there as well as my rpg stuff um so you can find that podcast at sailor moon fan club.com or any on your local podcatcher and that's me. Take it away. Em? Oh my gosh. Do y'all remember that one time when Mugen ate Strahd in the first episode? No! <laughs> 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 off to a strong start. Uh, oh my 20 god. 20 minutes in and we were already breaking ground with that. Uh, hi, I'm Em. Uh, I go by the username Nega Oryx on uh, all social platforms. And you can find me everywhere with that username i'm voice actor ttrpg player full-time streamer and a freelance host so i'm everywhere on the internet when i'm not here um playing gail the rap barbarian uh you can catch me on thursdays at 2 p.m pacific 5 p.m eastern on a star trek ttrpg show called star trek adventures loveless uh, i play a trill lieutenant commander and it's a lot of fun come through for that uh, or just come through when I'm streaming sometime. I play a lot of horror games, and right now I'm playing Horizon Zero Dawn for the first time. Thank you for having me. This was so much fun. This was a lot of fun. Uh, and Megan. I just started following Michelle on TikTok, and I love your voice impression videos. You are so good at every voice, and this has been so much fun. Oh, Everyone here is so good at their, their voice acting. Um, I am Megan Kendrick. Um, my character from the previous show I was on, Heroes of the Plains, Whittle, is a idol champion's character that is available to unlock, so do go check that out. And I will be here every Monday at 5 p.m., and I'm just happy to be here. I'm having so much fun. <laughs> All right, and uh, I guess that's me. I'm Todd Kinrick. I am your local dungeon master, and uh, thank you so much for watching. I cannot wait for the next episode. Have a great one, everyone. Good night, everyone. Bye.